it's Sonya Miller here of Junk Monkey Paint Company. Thank you for joining me here on YouTube for another vlog every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday. There's always something uploaded just for you. So today I'm going to answer one of the biggest questions that I get, and that is, Sonya, what do you use to clean your furniture? And as part of that question, I get the questions of like, do you even prep? Do I have to clean? When do you clean? Can I clean? And then go right at my project. So all the questions that surround that particular question is gonna get answered today. But first, I have to uh, just take a moment to say that we have a special guest in the room right here. Everybody say hello to Bob. You know it's about to get serious. Bob is here to say hello. And uh, you know, I'm feeling happy today and he is, he is with me right here. So there we go. Now we can continue on. So true story, look at me in the eyeballs, look at me in the eyeball when I tell you, cleaning is totally up to you. Because let's be honest, if you run a clean house and you're painting something that you already own and you know the conditions it came from, maybe you run a really nice clean home and you can just grab a brush and go bananas. But if you're somebody that, like me, that junks and thrifts and have painted everything that you possibly own in your home right now, and now you're at this point, you're collecting other people's junk that you're finding by the side of the road, that you're finding at thrift stores, all those places, people are giving it to you. You definitely want to clean it, right? Just for, just to kind of like make sure that everything's good to go. And you're going to feel good about your piece if you uh, start with a nice, clean, fresh piece, right? It's kind of just like taking a shower, right? And you feel good after you did it. And sometimes you never know what's on a piece as well. So it's important to clean it to get uh, oils and things like that off of it. So, dun da 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 I swear, every time I do a video, like a cannon fires, or did you hear that big crash? That was like, like thunder crazy, all right? But I do love a good rainstorm, so oh man. With any luck, it's gonna downpour, guys, and uh, it's gonna feel so homey here in my studio, and make me wanna paint something, and clean something before I paint it, all right? So here is what I love to use. It's called Crud Cutter with KK. You see that there, as in crud, not C-U-R-D, but K-R-U-D. Cutter, K-U-T-T-E-R, and um, I have been a painter professionally for 10 years I've been doing this, and um, I've definitely learned a lot. I've definitely learned that you never wanna use a cleaner that has any oil into it, okay? So this actually is called The Painter's Friend, so it's definitely a friend of yours if you're a painter, okay? See the connection there? But it says right on it, rem removes goo, gum, grease, and more on the back. It says it removes dried latex paint, oil-based paint splatters, caulking, and also wallpaper adhesive, right? Removes tough, oily, greasy, grimy, gooey problems. Because sometimes we all know that we can get a piece of furniture for, uh, for a really good price, but we kind of pay for it later, right? When we have to put a little extra elbow grease into it to get off the stickers, which I also use this for stickers as well. I just spray it on, I let it do a nice soak through, and then I can kind of like take a flat putty knife and just take them right off. So I love this as well for that purpose. But sometimes you get pieces that, you know what, you get them from, you get gifted them, but at the end of the day, you gotta do some extra work just to kind of get them all cleaned up, right? And sometimes pieces come from homes that might have just be extra greasy, right? Maybe they've been sitting outside for a while and got mud all splashed all over the side of them. You know what I'm talking about. So you guys have seen me use Krug Cutter, right? If you follow me often. And I also get this question on the heels of what do I use, let me see it, is that when do you use red and when do you use yellow? So there is one difference between these two and that is that the red contains a degreaser, okay? It's like a souped up version of the yellow one here. The yellow one, you can typically find more places. It's the more common one. It's like the average day use, okay? I use this to clean up um, paint splatters on my floor, all that sort of stuff as well as cleaning my furniture. So this one here costs usually around $6. Take it or leave a few cents depending on where you shop. You can definitely get it at Walmart. So I love the fact that it's something that we can all get. The red one is one that you typically find when you go to a hardware store because it's the souped up version, right? So if you go to like a Home Depot or a Lowe's and you see the red version, it's always nice to have it because having two in your stash, even though I use this one more, is nice because this one you pull out when you have those super greasy pieces. So say for example, you're cleaning a cabinet door and you're getting ready to paint it, okay? You know, something that comes from a kitchen, a cabinet door is gonna, you know, there's a deep fryer going, there's lots of heat and humidity and things are fried on the stove. All that leads to more grimy, 
the ooey gooey, um, you know, build up. So this is the stuff that's going to be really good to clean cabinets, to clean um, even chairs and tables. Stuff that food is uh, on a lot of times, okay? Does it make sense? So souped up version, you pay usually a little extra for this one. I like to grab it when I see it, just to have it and pull out in those scenarios. But this is my, my pretty much all time go-to right here, okay? So having a little bit of both is really cool. Now the next thing is, well, how do I use it, all right? So you're definitely gonna want to spray your piece down um, before you paint and give it time to dry. The other thing I'm gonna tell you guys to do is use a cloth versus using paper towels. Now you guys know if you go to junkmonkeypaint.com that we have little white towels on there that uh, are called Better Than Cheese Cloth. They're an amazing, amazing uh, towel used to buff wax. This is not that, okay? Not that. This is a cheap, do you see this? Cheap like, it feels like the towels and the face cloths that you, uh, that you know, that you use. Like, so here's a tip. If you can find face cloths for really, really cheap at the dollar store, get a whole pack of those and leave them for using, yeah, for when you're cleaning your furniture, okay? If you have towels in your house that have just been used and after a while they just start to break down or have holes, I cut those up, okay? Keep those um, in your space to be able to clean with because when you use a paper towel, and it gets wet, it kind of like just flattens out. And so you're really not getting a clean onto it, right? Whereas if you use something like this, that you know is really like a terry cloth or something that really has some really um, like hard fibers into it, it doesn't lay flat. It actually pulls dirt off with it. So this is why, this is what I love. I get these at Walmart typically, um, like I say, or unless I find like a pack of something, maybe I'm at a discount bargain shop and I'm finding like old little tiny towels and face cloths. I don't care the colors, obviously, because at the end of the day, that doesn't make a difference. So here is what I do. I'm gonna take my, I'm gonna use this as an example. This is actually part of a whole bowl set, which I'm gonna be painting probably starting today on my Facebook page. If you guys are not following me over there, you need to because there's lots of extra fun over there. But I got this uh, bowl, tower of bowl, bowls, Bows, man, say that a million million times. It starts to sound strange. Bows, um, five ninety nine for the whole pile. Okay, so I'm gonna repurpose these. No, I'm not gonna eat out of these. Can we just talk about it for a second? We should do a whole vlog on things that you absolutely should not buy when you're at the thrift store, right? In terms of reusing them, like underwear. Hello, I mean that's a given, right? But also, I'm not somebody who likes to take somebody else's food utensils and reuse them. Um, but I will reuse them and repurpose them for my shop. For example, you know, I can clean this, I can paint this, and all of a sudden now on my desk, I have a cute little holder for my pens, my my pencils, um, for my paper clips, for all those sorts of things, right? So here's an example of what I will do because this is something that will need clean because I wanna make sure it's it's sanitized and clean and good to go right before I paint. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my crud cutter and I'm gonna do just a few sprays over the entire thing, inside and outside, just a few sprays. We're not giving it a spa day here. We're not trying to run it through the dishwasher. We're giving it a few sprays and then we're coming after it with that, that towel, okay? And now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to clean it, all right? And what will happen is, even though you might think that it's totally clean, I get this a lot when I work on people's furniture, that, or even when I used to go into their homes doing cabinets, and they'd be like, oh, I cleaned them. Well, by the time I take the card cutter to them, usually we're gonna see some dirt come off, right? Stuff that you think your cabinets are clean, it's totally normal, but they just collect a lot of stuff. So that's awesome. So I've got this now cleaned really good. So here is the last tip I leave you with, and that is to be patient. Go eat some Doritos, go watch, I don't know, go catch a little bit of the next movie, go put your music on, do what you gotta do, get your paint all together. You never wanna paint over something that you just cleaned immediately, okay? At the end of the day, you want this to be dry because by the time you put your uh, paint on it, your Junk Monkey paint, you want your paint to not have any sort of weird reactions with anything else, right? You want it to be totally dry for it to be able to suck into a nice dry piece, all right? Now the reason why I love Krug Cutter is because it doesn't have any oils. And when I talk about, you know, um, reactions that can happen, if you use an oily based uh, cleaner, like I do not use any sort of soap detergents, anything like that, dishwashing detergents, because it all has um, an oil into it <clears throat> and what can happen is that oil sits on top of your your piece that you just cleaned and now you go in with a paintbrush and you start to see weird things happen okay and so weird reactions that can happen between the two of them remember oil resists 
you don't want it to resist your paint job, right? So go with a crud cutter, painter's friend. It's not gonna do that to you, but you do wanna give it time to make sure it's dry fully. So give it like, honestly, depending on how much you put onto it, which please don't put a lot, um, but you know, five, 10, 15 minutes, and then it's nice and dry to the touch. Like this is dry to the touch now, I can start to paint it because I didn't put a whole lot on it, right? It's a smaller surface. So um, now we're good to go ahead and paint it, which like I say, join me on Facebook and you'll see what I do with this whole tower of bowls and um, how I make it all come together. So I hope that has been beneficial and helpful to you guys out there. So you kind of understand that why you don't want to go with something oily based and you know the manner in what to use with it. Stay away from tissues and things like that because that would just lead to little things being stuck in your project. But get yourself some awesome uh, cheap rags. Cut up that towel that's been through the washer a million one times. Do what you gotta do. Clean it and then feel good about the next uh, stage, which is putting on the paint. <sighs> Bob, are you, are you hearing me? Are you happy with me, Bob? I, th I think Bob's happy to be here today. And I'm happy that you guys are here. Join me every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday where I upload a new vlog and we see what we get into, all right? So be sure to subscribe to our channel, give me a big thumbs up, and I'd love it if you would leave a comment for me below. How are you enjoying these vlogs? And hopefully you learned something today. Will you try Crud Cutter or have you already picked some up to try? I'd love to hear your review. All right, I will talk to you guys later. Take care, see you tomorrow.